what's up guys, Eddie Martinez here with The Recording Connection and welcome to your additional supplemental video for lesson number 16. Now as you already know, this is all about production skills and beat matching. So what I want to go ahead and show you is some more things that you need to know using MIDI uh, to go ahead and create better production. So go ahead and fire up your Pro Tools and we'll get started. Alright guys, so hopefully you have a Pro Tools session brought up right now. Now if you don't have a Pro Tools session brought up, don't worry, just take plenty of notes and apply this information as soon as you can. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and edit some MIDI so you understand how the tools uh, are used and you know obviously the power of MIDI. Okay so uh, as you can see uh, this is the same project that you know we've been kind of working on for a little while. What I did is I went ahead and I uh, unquantized some parts of the song and uh, moved some notes around so that you know we can go ahead and edit. Okay so let's listen how it sounds like and then we'll begin making adjustments. So it sounds a little strange, <laughs> obviously. It doesn't sound like the way it originally sounds. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and use a bunch of different tools, like uh, you know, obviously the Smart Tools, Pencil Tool, and a few other um, you know parameters and tools that you can go ahead and use right here with MIDI. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and change the note values because obviously uh, the, this note value is not 100% correct, and this will happen a lot of times when you're recording you know, somebody who's recording with a MIDI instrument. Uh, they'll actually mess up here and there, but it's obviously your job to go ahead and adjust their performance to make it sound perfect. So let's go ahead and start by adjusting this uh, length right here to where it should be. And this note right here doesn't belong there. But first thing before we actually change, uh, you know, where the notes should be, which is like right there, we're going to change the note length first. So we're bringing that down. Always make sure to use your smart tool. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring this where it belongs. And now this section right here, uh, it's starting a little bit late. Now there's a, let's say for example, you know that this begins at the at a quarter note or something like that, or the beginning of a measure. You can go ahead and make sure that it gets there by uh, selecting this right here. And I'll move it. There. Now, if you, let's say, for example, it belongs somewhere else, but you still want to quantize, uh, you'd go back to the, the grid area right here, and let's say you want to move it to 16th note. You see, I can go ahead and move it there, and it's quantized to 16th note. Okay, very cool. Other things that you could do, of course, is uh, adjust velocities, which means like if you were playing or the person that was playing, uh, had their dynamics all over the place, they were striking particular notes harder than others, you want to kind of make sure that everything sounds all together, you'll go over to this section right here, go to velocity, and right here gives you all the different uh, velocity hits or actually uh, strengths that you could use. So you could either make them quieter or you can bring them up a bit, however you want to do it. You could even do this by uh, you know segments if you want to go ahead and adjust a lot of them at the same time. Okay, that's another thing you could do. You could also with with MIDI, you could also adjust you know volume, and this is basically like automation. This is essentially that's what it is is automation. So let's go ahead and take a quicker look at that. And for this, you will use use your pencil tool. So let's go ahead and select that. And I'm just going to go ahead and just uh, select some points and move them up, and down, a little bit like that. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a listen and we'll hear the dynamic of this uh, particular loop change. So that's something you could do as well. Let's go ahead and move this back to the way it was. Cool. You could also do the same thing with uh, muting. With panning, so if you want to go ahead and like you know change the panning from left to right, you can definitely do that. And this will definitely sound weird, uh, especially since I'm doing the recording using monitors, so it's going to sound a little funky. Uh, but I'll hit play. Okay, so let's go ahead and adjust that back to the way it was. Pitch band, you could change, uh, you can 
you know, essentially if you were working with a keyboard that had a pitch bend, you can affect the the pitch of the note from note to note, which will give it kind of like a, how do you say, like a portamento type of vibe to it. Uh, after touch, that's another thing that you could do. Go ahead and adjust that. So changing the parameters of aftertouch was a little bit more subtle, but there's plenty of other effects right here that you can go ahead and work with, some with more extreme, I guess, uh, uh, results. So my suggestion to you is to go ahead and just create some melodies, so, you know, either if you have a keyboard, go ahead and connect your keyboard to, uh, obviously to Pro Tools, and uh, just, you know, make some melodies or do some chord progressions, or if you don't have a keyboard, all you need to do is use your pencil tool and go ahead and just write in some note values and begin experimenting like that. So I hope this video was helpful, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. All right, guys, that's all the information that I have for you today, but of course it's up to you to put this knowledge to use. Now, don't forget to jump back into your Recording Connection workbook and just double check to see if you have any mandatory supplemental reading assignments to turn in for this week. Now, if you feel shaky on any of this material, what you need to do is go back into your provided textbook and reread that material. Just remember that these videos are only a supplement to your education. Okay? Now, if you're watching this video online and you want to know more about the recording process uh, and you want to learn how to become a recording engineer in just six months, what you need to do is you need to check out the recordingconnection.com or call the provided number. RSAP is actually going to set you up with an engineer in your town or in a town near you. We have tons of locations all across the U.S. and parts of Canada, and we're actually really proud to say that we have more than a 72% hiring success rate thanks to our student advisor that comes with your enrollment. So I hope you guys all enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you guys a little bit later.